New York City, home to the largest Italian American population in the United States, the capital of Italian American culture. There are Italian communities in all five boroughs, the most notable being in downtown Manhattan. However, we wanted to step outside of Manhattan today. We wanted to go off and explore some niche hidden areas of New York City. We didn't go to Brooklyn. We didn't go as far as Queens. You know we didn't go to Staten Island or Long Island, but the boogie down Bronx. The little Italy of the Bronx and some would argue the true little Italy of New York City. Often overlooked and hidden to most New Yorkers, Arthur Avenue may not be the first place you'd look for a thriving Italian American community. But unlike many of the areas in the city, Arthur Avenue has found a way to stay incredibly true to its Italian roots. On Main Street, there's no McDonald's or Starbucks, but family-owned businesses. Generations deep, giving Arthur Avenue the highest concentration of third-generation businesses in the entire city. One of those businesses is Adeo's Bakery, owned and operated by Lawrence Adeo. Adeo's opened 80 years ago and has remained as one of Arthur Avenue's three bread bakeries in the neighborhood. Lawrence inherited the business from his father and falls ever so perfectly between a traditional Italian bread baker and a hipster foodie. And outside, I met up with John Barr, a New York City vlogger. Through his vlogging, he shares insights and secrets that many locals don't even know about. After showing us some old family photos, Lawrence took us into the bakery, and what better way to get a conversation going than breaking bread with the baker himself. Now, you have some of the breads here that we produce. I think I uh, mentioned before, this bread here, and you can see it right here, this is, a, uh, is known as chigala bread, or if you want to be real old time, you can say Amazonia bread. If you just want to be what we are, it's basically lard bread. And this is a bread that's made with meat and lard. So you can really? see some of the slice pieces here. This is, um, it's got um, spiced ham, it's got prosciutto, it's got salami, and it's got pieces of um, chigala. Now the chigala are those uh, crunchy rendered pieces of fat if you cook them, um, and they're just really good, so you should, you should, you should taste Please. this, and you should uh -huh. taste this. And I'll, I'll eat some too, because so I this is a little pork here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so this is definitely, um, if you're, if you have a heart condition, or if you're a vegetarian, <laughs> or anything else, you don't eat this. But it is, again, one of our most popular um, pieces of bread. Incredible. Yeah, it's great. It feels like soft, fresh, amazing. And it's very moist because of the lard. In it. Yeah. How much lard would you say goes into one of these things? A lot. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's an official measure. A lot is an official measure. How does you know, your father become that's actually an interesting question. My grandparents were not bakers. What happened was, um, like most immigrants, you come to a country and you, you start to think of your sort of something that you can do, something that's going to make you money, that's going to support your family. And one of his friends said, well, you should come up to the Bronx, like I said. And they decided to come up to the Bronx. They said, it's a great neighborhood. There's a lot of food. And, and someone suggested you should get into the bread business. My father and my uncle were probably the first to actually be bakers. Uh, my father was someone who could do anything. He could mix, he could roll, he could work the oven. That's kind of how me and my cousin are too. We can do everything in this space. And that's the way most immigrants are. I mean, they will work so many hours every day. They'll work seven days a week and they'll work two jobs if they have to. I know people who have had businesses and had another job because they needed to be able to supplement their income as their business grew. And you know that is, to me, the most important thing about this country is that um, if you're gonna come from halfway across the world to come someplace, well, you're coming for a reason. And in most cases, you're coming to make your life better. Next course, cheese. The late great Anthony Bourdain once said shooting cheese is a lot like shooting porn. First comes the establishing shot. Move in for a close up, cut away for a reaction, and money. Cue Arazio, the king of mozzarella. Arazio hails from Sicily and has been crafting these fine balls of cheese for over 35 years. As we found out, he hates fat free cheese as much as I do. He also hates to be disturbed at work, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Ask him about Italian football, and he opens right up. Now that we have eaten our appetizers, it was time for the first course. Enzo's on Arthur Avenue may not be the oldest spot, but it has become a favorite to outsiders and locals alike. Pino is a true character, and an expert on the area. So as the food came out, so did his feelings about Arthur Avenue. 
simply as I said before, I think it is a, a denoted part of many ethnic groups that is fine now. However, when it comes to uh, shopping, it's the most authentic place to shop. And not to bear none of any other areas in New York or anything, but here it's, it's, it's all a kind of put together and you have all kinds of flavoring and you can, if you want, get anything you want that comes from Italy. Yeah. Pure product. And that's just the shopping. The restaurants are the same. I can mention the fact that in this area, we're not, we have no competition. We don't compete among ourselves. Uh, we just work together because here if you're no good you're close people come here to have something particular mm -hmm. uh, Enzo came in survived 13 years and still going very strong why because it provides authentic unique flavoring of Italian food so what is um what has been added because you know obviously you know, we're all we're all immigrants here, we all came from a different country, our family came from Eastern Europe, here's an immigrant from Italy, your family did. You know, what has been the addition to, you know, what's the difference between, you know, Italian-American food and between food that's going to be based on... That's a very interesting question. Now, the Italian-American food, <coughs> traditionally, <coughs> it's... Uh, John? Well, you have to send the first immigrants that came here, uh, and uh, they had to adapt to what they had. But, uh, for instance, uh, the meatballs. Now, the meatballs is a traditional stuff that you can eat side. For instance, if you have a, a pasta, we'll make some meatball, but we'll have them on the side. We won't incorporate it into the pasta. So the spaghetti meatball is another uh, Italian American invention, because what they wanted was the meatball, so they took it and put it into the pasta, and then it became spaghetti meatball. And there are a few other items, in it, but mostly, if you go to any Italian restaurants, you will have a different kind of cooking. Every place. After we finished off a meal like a real Italian would, I wasn't through with my journey. There were still major elements of the Italian food experience that I was missing. I happened to stumble into Calabria's Pork Store. It's as if destiny called me. Once I glanced up towards the heavens and before me hung a miraculous chandelier made of soppressata. Calabria cuts up to 2,000 pounds of meat to deck the halls of its illustrious pork chandelier. The carnivore couldn't get enough sampling the meats. I had to fly up to the chandelier and become one of the sausages. My Italian meal wouldn't be complete without something sweet. It was time for the fifth course, dessert. There is no more iconic Italian dessert than a cannoli. But not just any cannoli. A cannoli from world famous Gino's Pastry Shop on Arthur Avenue. Seen the Bronx Tale? Then you may have already seen Gino's Pastry Shop. It's been featured in both the movie and the Broadway musical because of this Italian taco. This is Jerome. He's the second generation owner to this establishment and he led us on to what makes Gino's so good. They've been using the same ricotta cheese to stuff these Italian tacos since Jerome's father started the business over 60 years ago. I've never eaten a cannoli before, and as soon as I expressed this to Gino, he insisted that there was no better way to enjoy my first cannoli than by making so, it myself. Okay, I'm gonna screw this up so bad. All right. Put that there. Bag here. <laughs> okay, oh, good. That's good. You got it. Twist. Just twist. Hold it. Alright, not squeeze. Go ahead. Don't be greedy. Give to the needy. They were full. Go ahead. That's oh. it. Pull out. Pull out. To the end. Don't be cheap. <laughs> Alright. Just going for the dip. Drop the chips on one. That's it. Wow, wow you're bad. bad. Gino, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. I have to make and try my first canola. Here we go. I don't know why it took this long. Oh, is man. this really your first cannoli? It really is. You should be ashamed of himself. So. <laughs> it should be. I've heard a lot of that today so far. Thank you so much again. <laughs> oh man, it's my pleasure.
Guys, make sure you come out. Gino's, it's the best in New York City. The Bronx is a real hodgepodge of Italians, Albanians, Mexicans, and Central Americans. No one worried about competition. They are merely working together to make their American dreams come true. Our other avenue has become a true representation of what it means to be American. Just the right amount of crazy to make a better life for yourself while staying true to where you came from. Thank you guys so much for tuning in the video. Arthur Avenue, Bronx Little Italy, is the real Little Italy. I've been out to the Manhattan one. This place was just so much more, so much more magic to it, so much more warm reception to it. I couldn't have done it without these amazing people today. One, two, three, uh, run it. Ha, ha.